very humbled by my two uh, fellow uh, presenters here today, and also very honored that uh, you guys felt that I was, had the caliber to even be in the, in the same conversation as uh, these guys to talk about innovation. So uh, I'll do the best I can. So let me see. Yep, I'll move over here. So uh, real quick, my name is McCall Reckley. I work for uh, Turner Construction, the construction company. Uh, down in Boston. Uh, we do a lot of work. We're actually building a uh, building right around the corner from here, Wellesley High School. Um, I was in the military before I joined the construction industry, and then I, um, I was a computer science major in college. Uh, came over to uh, the construction industry. Was a regular construction guy for years, and then I started picking up on some things like uh, scheduling softwares, doing some things with databases. Uh, then this new thing called building information modeling came around, and then I moved into the position that I'm doing now. So, let's go. Okay, so I'm going to show you a little movie here. Well, actually, no, it's going to. First things first. I'm very excited about being here, but the one question that I really want, you know, everyone to kind of let sink in is to always feel like they should be asking is, is there a better way we can we can do this? And I always feel like that whenever I get into a new position, a new job, or new something. Like, I'm always looking and evaluating what, what, what are we doing and is there a better way we can do this. And I think that is basically the birth of innovation. Now, Carl Bass is the CEO of Autodesk. Autodesk creates a lot of the modeling software companies that uh, we use in our industry. Uh, he gave this speech to me, um, not to just me, but the entire audience, back in 2009 at a, uh, at a conference in Las Vegas. Uh, I was totally taken by this, and I've been using it in, for my presentations, but I always want to want to give them credit. This is the technology spectrum. Now, this is going to probably mimic a little bit what Malcolm and Bill had said, but I will give it to you in my own way. Technology flows from an impossible state to a required state. Um, first example I'd like to give you is the flying machine. So Leonardo da Vinci, back in the 1400s, uh, developed the plans and specs for a flying machine, even though back then it was an impossible technology. Now, if you look at flying, it is a required technology. Any distance over 200 miles or so, you're, you're probably going to fly over, over drive. But it's just a good example of how technology flows. Another good example of a technology that hasn't been invented yet, I like to use is the uh, Star Trek uh, transporters. Uh, that right now would probably be an impossible technology, unless they've made something we don't know about. And uh, <laughs> Maybe sometime in the future, it's going to move to a point where it's required technology, just like elevators did in buildings. You can't build a building more than two flights without an elevator, you know, and so on and so forth. So the reason why I bring this up, as it flows from impossible to required, uh, most of the world lives here. Most of the world it lives here in the mainstream, which is the, the expected to required state. They look at technology, they adapt technology, embrace the technology, when it's like expected or required, when it's, when it's mainstream. To be on the cutting edge is to be in the possible. It's to grab it when it's possible, to grab it when it's, just the, when it's affordable, when it's, when it's usable in the company. And that's where I like to live like that. Now, I know that, they've, that uh, my, my two companions have said something similar, but I just want to show it a different way. I think living in the possible is definitely what helps you, uh, you know, Bring more innovation to your company, uh, help sustain your competitive edge against your, against your competitors, uh, and it, and it uh, helps you move along. Uh, living and expecting required, that's that middle road to, to nowhere. I like that. All right, so I think this is supposed to play a movie. Well, we'll skip the movie. Um, just a real quick on the, my big picture for the construction industry. The AEC, the Architectural uh, Engineering Construction Industry, uh, has been pretty much called about 30% of what we do is wasteful and inefficient. Uh, our, our industry is riddled with inefficiencies and a lot of tools and stuff that we use. We could build buildings a lot better, a lot cheaper. We just got to figure out a better way to uh, deliver the project. Now, there's this philosophy that has been developed over the last 10, 15 years called lean construction. Now, I'm going to get a big presentation on lean construction, but basically that is... A, a way that was adopted from the automotive industry to be more lean in how you uh, develop your projects and build your buildings. 
Uh, over here is this process, this new collaborative process that have developed to ensure that we can do the lean philosophies. Uh, as, a, as it currently states in, a, in a projects that we, we do now, the tra traditional delivery method, uh, the, it's very difficult for us to, to do all those lean construction philosophies because of contract structure and just kind of the way we do things. So I just want to throw that out there. Um, this is my office. This is, uh, this is the virtual technology group. This is my office. Lots of screens. My boss said he wanted it to look like Star Trek when we, when we get I'm done. Yes, yes, <laughs> never, we're paper posts. Uh, this is our mission statement, so I'm going to let you look at that. If, if you can't read it, I guess I'll read it, because some people can't read it. Uh, in support of a core business, the traditional processes of every phase of construction will be analyzed and improved upon through the use of new technologies and innovative thinking. So it goes along uh, with the, the whole ideal of this, you know, this lab. So, we talked about you know, the big picture up here. Down here is what I call the, all the tools of efficiency that we like to implement uh, to, to fight that 30% you know, waste of the job. Um, the big one that a lot of people here in the construction industry is, is the building information modeling. We'll talk about that, but we're going to talk about a few other ones too. Just kind of showing some of the things that we can do to better, uh, better, do, our, better do our job, you know, improve the way we build buildings. So, in essence, what building information modeling is, is we will take uh, several models of the building, computer models of the different systems, the structural, the architectural, the electrical, plumbing, and what have you, and then we'll put them together in a consolidated model in the same coordinate plane and do what's called clash detection or coordination. This is a, a method of getting it right the first time uh, virtually before we go out to the, build, the building and have to work out the problem in the field. That's the way we've always been doing it. We, we would try to get it correct on two-dimensional paper. It's very difficult. You're going to miss a lot of stuff, and then we just try to fix it in the field and add a lot, a lot more time and labor and cost materials to the job. We're also being a lot more collaborative using this tool. Uh, collaboration was mentioned earlier again. Uh, that is really changing the way we do our business. We've got, this is, this is a, a scene you would never see in a, at a construction site 10 years ago. You've got the all the subcontractors in the same room working together to try to get the right solution for the building. And, and we've even got the architect in there too. So this is a, a relationship that has never been in the construction industry. It was what made us much, much more productive uh, and much, much better builder. So just give you a, a quick example. There's two-dimensional drawing. There's the exact same drawing done three, in three dimensions at the bottom. You can see where it's a lot easier to visualize. It doesn't necessarily mean you have to be you know, even, even uh, construction professionals still have difficulty seeing some of the issues that you'll, that'll happen in those two top, top situations. Just more examples of it. We also will uh, model extra um, spaces within the buildings to, to account for code, code clearances. And if we have to pull a piece of equipment out later, so that one on the left is like a ghosting of that, that tank coming out to get serviced. We've got to make sure that when, we, when it, time for that tank to come out to get service, there's no pipe running down in the middle of the hallway that's going to you know, prevent you from doing that. Just some more uh, examples of structural to ar architectural coordination. This is a uh, curtain wall coordination. We'll, we're going to move along. Um, this is, uh, so the next thing I want to talk about are logistics plans, which is a very important part of what we do. This is the only way. This is, this is uh, an actual sketch that my boss had given me uh, when I was a field engineer to you know, demonstrate how he wanted to lay the, the site out for, for, the, uh, for the steel and the concrete. Um, this is the way we can deliver it now. This is a much clearer way. It's more, more understandable for everyone on the construction team, the subcontractors, and the client and, and the designer as well as, as, well, as, well, as well as the people in the com surrounding community. Uh, we can post this up on a project site board outside the site so they can totally see where everything is. They can see where um, Pedestrian pathways are going to be redirected because we're affecting like a campus or, or how vehicular traffic is going to get redirected. And everything here is built, built to scale, so spatially and, and to scale, it makes it much easier to communicate uh, what our project approach is going to be. Uh, just more examples of some logistics plans that we've used in the past. And we sh we're showing logistics at different phases of the project as well. Hopefully my other movie is going to work, but... I'll, that's going to show you the, 
the simulation of the building getting built. And, uh, and this was used at a, a jet port that we built up in Portland, Maine, where we included a, a cylinder for the crane radius. Um, the, the client was concerned about the crane being over into the air side of the, uh, of the terminal, um, possibly interjecting with, with, with the air travel there. So they just wanted to be able to show the FFA. I love that airport. Thank you. I love that. It's so nice. We're, so we're, on, we're on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> I just built it virtually. I didn't actually <laughs> build it. All right, so so uh, so let's jump into 4D. So this is where I uh, so we talked about 3D, three dimensions, uh, and and then we've had 4D, a, a dimension of time. Um, this is where you add schedule schedule elements that attach to elements into the model giving you a simulation of the building getting built. Uh, this next slide should be a movie of the jet port getting built, but I don't think it's... Might have to... <laughs> click, can you click on that? Will it work? Okay, well, this is what we can do. Hit escape, and then go to the folder. Sorry for this. This is very inefficient. Uh, if you minimize that, there should be a folder on the desktop. All right, and it's called overall. Uh, is that folder? I'm sorry. Close that up. <laughs> All on YouTube. Where do you put my... Um, is, that a fol is there a folder? No. There's a folder in here. If you... <laughs> there has to be. There it is. There. No. Okay, if you go to where you see the three, the three things minimized, so the bottom left, and go to that little window right there. Uh, move over to the, like, the window. To the left, to the left. The little window sign. All right, I'm about to give up on this. <laughs> hit, hit, um. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know, really? <laughs> I have my own laptop. <laughs> Left click. Good. Yep. Uh, that's all. No, no, no. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Desktop. There you go. And they're not there. <laughs> click on the, the no, no, click on uh, the c computer. Click on computer. I think you left my, uh, all right, you know what? It's not there. I'm not sure what he did. Uh, I, my, uh, yeah, it's not, that's why the, the videos aren't playing. So I apologize. I've got the videos here if you want to put in the flash drive. <laughs> yeah, it won't take a second. Yeah. There's a bunch of videos. <laughs> All right, now. Can I open files for you? Yeah. <laughs> overall, overall. Yep, and I click on all in presentation. Uh, when? And then hit, turn on the slideshow. Let's see if this, uh, that did anything. Is 
that was a big waste of time. There you go. So. <laughs> that was pretty horrible. <laughs> <laughs> so what you're seeing here is uh, 4D model. Thank you, thank you, sir, for your help. Um, and what, what we what you, you can see up in the upper left corner are the weeks ticking by um, and showing exactly where the building's going to be built at what time during the uh, during a, during the scheduling of the project. Uh, one another big thing for the client was the, uh, the you see the pink road right there. That is uh, vehicular access to the rest of the terminals. And they wanted to make sure that that was never affected during the entire, um, the entire length of the job. So we were able to show the, the road jumping from left to right as different phases happened. Because we did have to move the road, but there was always access into the rest of the terminal. Um, so there, yeah, that, was, that was very su good success. It made it to the Portland News, too, even though they didn't give me credit. <laughs> they call it an artist rendering, so everyone's like calling me, oh, you're the artist now? <laughs> I'll let that finish up. Formerly known as, and we put a little, put a little car in there. Okay. Um, does this? Yeah. So this is another uh, example of 4D. Um, there's a schedule tied to this, but we're also trans translocating the objects, and this is a simulation of bringing all the materials onto a mechanical floor. Um, this is a very complicated floor for a national hospital, uh, and to to war game it ahead of time, virtually really really helped us out and putting it in right the, fir the first time that we went to go put the equipment in. And we saved a lot of time on that floor by running this exercise, you know, a few times with the subcontractors, making some changes and making it work. And just some, here's some pictures of the, the floor being built. Uh, so the next, the next phase I'd like to talk about is uh, virtual mock-ups. This is, you guys have seen all the renderings and the possibilities that computers can do now. Uh, these are photorealistic images of actual Revit models that the architect created, and, uh, and, and you can see they look extremely, extremely real. They're very good to demonstrate to the client what the room is going to look like, or, or at least the client and the architect to see exactly what the design is going to be and make sure that we're on the right track. If, we sh if shown early during the, during the process, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll give lots of benefits to changes that don't happen later in the process. You don't want changes to happen later. It's going to be much more expensive. Uh, so this is a this quick little animation of the same room. And then just kind of like, you know, navigating around the room. So we decided to take this uh, one step further and talk more about, like, you know, some of the things that are in the possible is uh, the virtual reality piece that we, we were able to uh, implement. Uh, so you, get, you see the guy in the upper left corner with the uh, hat actually brought example of that. Yeah, props. I yeah, got props. So um, you you put that on, and it, you, to you, to yourself, you wouldn't see anybody else. You'd be walking around inside this model. Uh, very, very uh, cutting edge. I, we found this company out in California that was doing this, and we quickly made a deal with them and uh, started to provide the service to the clients that they needed. And then we've had a lot of people from other, other business units of ours that have requested to use this too. Very good in hospitals, very good in labs because of, uh, you know, you got an end user group that really isn't dealing with, uh, used to dealing with drawings and, and things of, of that nature so much. So it's good for a, like a, a, a scientist or a doctor to like walk around inside the operating room or lab way early in the design before, you know, materials are bought and things like that. So it can, you know, change some, change some things. We found a lot of benefit out of that. Um, so the next step, and I don't, I don't think that's working. I didn't want to show you that anyway. But the next step would be uh, to actually, actually um, using the model for the, 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 the I call the I, the I am them, the information, the information that's tied to all the objects in the model. This video is going to show like you mousing through a model, clicking on something, and you know, like, to grab all the documents from it. A lot of people in my industry like to call this 5D or 6D, which you know, makes, makes, makes me sick because it's only the iron information. We've already, we've already covered that. So, you know, just calling the iron information something different every time, you know. Like, when does it stop? Like, you showed the car with 130 miles per hour. When does it stop with the Ds? When you find more uses for the model, it's just, when does it stop? It just doesn't. Um, 
digital asbel imaging, laser scanning. Uh, this has been a technology that has recently been gotten to a point where it's been useful in a lot of jobs, especially when there's existing conditions and we have to build into it. Um, so they'll scan a, a room, and what you see in gray is, is the area that's been scanned and then go through a, a modeling process when they take what's called the point cloud. And then the, the color um, objects are the ones that are in plan, the ones that are going to be in there and make sure they're coordinated correctly. And then when you go out and build it, it fits, you know, theoretically. Uh, so more examples of it. But it, it has helped a lot. No, of course, it's not 100% uh, perfect, but it has really, really helped to reduce that 30% inefficiency we have in the field. Mm. And we're not moving. I'm just destined to destroy, destroy this presentation. <laughs> okay. And I think that was going to be like a fly-through. We're not, we're not going to dwell on that. All right. Uh, okay, so let's talk about a couple things that we're doing not having to do with computer graphics and, you know, cool-looking uh, computer buildings. Um, there's a thing we, we do at the end of a job called punch list um, that any of you guys have been involved in building buildings know, you know, how much of a horror show that can be. Because you've got, a, you know, you've got a client creating a list of all the things that need to be fixed. You've got the architect creating a list of all the things that need to be fixed. And you've got the construction team creating a list, too. So you've got three different lists, three different ways. Like, one's Excel, one's, like, note paper, one's, you know, some other system. And we're trying to combine that list and get it all accomplished. So we've just used some very simple Microsoft Office tools that are available to everybody to create a, a, a list that's a collaborative effort. And everyone could be using the same system. And it all goes to the same database. So we're using SharePoint with the access database at the front, where you can, whether you want to enter it from the office or enter it out in the field on a PC tablet or iPad. Uh, and, and this is the list that is generated. This has saved us days and days, man, man hours, man hours of, of work. To, 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 and it's also reduced the amount of um, problems and issues that come up you know, with the punch list. You know, my, my list, my item didn't get added or someone deleted my item, or you know, things like that. It, things go on and on like that throughout the job. Very simple to use. We use SharePoint. You guys are all familiar with SharePoint. Maybe not you know, super high level collaboration platform, but very good for what we're doing in the industry. And it's helped a lot. It's made us go paperless on a couple of jobs where you know, before we're passing you know, $400,000 <laughs> worth of paper back and forth to, to, to build a building. And we're doing all in the, the, the SharePoint, uh, you know, SharePoint space with PDFs and Adobe, Adobe and Bluebeam and tools of that nature. You know, it, and it's like these little things like this that really can make us a much better builder. And it does, we don't have to come and overhaul the company, but little tweaks here and there. To, you know, one thing that I, I didn't put up here, but you know, GoToMeeting seems like a very, you know, everyone knows about GoToMeeting. Well, not everyone knows about GoToMeeting. Uh, you know, like I, I have people like, hey, can you come over and show this to me on the computer? And I said, hold on a second, I'll just start a GoToMeeting with you. And they just thought that I like, you know, made the Statue of Liberty disappear or something like that. They were just kind of, <laughs> where did you learn? What is that? And I was like, it's GoToMeeting. It's been around. For so, so. But, but. And, that, that, and a magician. Yeah, yes, yes. I, and, um. <laughs> This is Adobe, Adobe um, Professional. Yeah, yeah again, like, like I said before, everyone, everyone knows how to use Adobe Professional. That's not true. Not everyone knows how to use Adobe <laughs> Professional. So well, this, is, this was a big, this was a big um, uh, challenge for a, for, a lot of our, for a lot of our employees. They were, what they were doing was, OK, they were like, fine, we'll, we'll take it in Adobe, take it off of SharePoint. I'm going to print it out. I'm going to mark it up. I'm going to scan it. I'm going to put it back into SharePoint. So this is obviously make, taking more time than the original way of doing things. It's because they're using a different tool, but using the same way that they use the old tool, you know, the problem in the first place. So we, we had to train them up on using markup tools, simple things like that. Along with markup tools, we, I even created a little, a little um, stamp. We have to stamp each drawing as we mark it up. So again, they were marking it up in Adobe, and then they were printing it out, they were stamping it, and then they were scanning it back in and uploading it in Adobe. <laughs> so what we, what we did is create a, 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 a dynamic stamp for them that does the actual Turner stamp, fills in their name and the date, and they can put the little submittal number on it, and they don't ever have to get off the computer or print anything out. So that's how you can become paperless. 
But I'm telling you, little things like that, you, 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 don't, you leave them alone, they will, they will do it the hardest way possible. Um, safety report, and this is a new thing that's actually being scaled out to other business units and maybe even all of our company is where we're doing our safety reporting uh, before it was previously done, just like you know, a lot of inefficient um, companies like to do them. You do them all in Excel, you email them all to one guy, and he makes a big composite list and maybe makes a graph out of it or something. You know, so there's some problems with the, the Excel part. You know, they're going to mess up the cells. They're going to just type in things where they're supposed to let the formulas do it. And then when it gets all to one guy, he has to spend like you know, three or four days getting all this correct and then make, and making the spreadsheet up. Now we've made a very nice, nice easy um, uh, SharePoint form for them to fill out. And, and it does all the, the calculations for them, and everything's abstracted from them. It all gets dumped into one SharePoint database that the, the safety director can turn around and just hit a button and then create those graphs that you saw on the previous slide that shouldn't have showed up up uh, here. So, you know, this is what we turn into our executive vice presidents once a month. Uh, and this, this is all important data that, that, uh, that they're getting. Executive pri vice president sees this, and now he's like, I want everyone in the company uh, turning in reports like this to me. So, you know, this is, it goes again along the lines of the, you know, why I liked what, what Malcolm was saying about would you just have Facebook just in your, just in your house and, and not use, um, you know, all the resources of all the business units, all the projects, or all the, you know, all the regions to, to accomplish a lot of goals. I mean, there's a lot of good, good ideas and good technology out there, and, uh, you know, I think we're, we're getting a little bit better at it in our industry. You know, we're, we're being a little bit... We're being a little bit better about going across the, the way over to you know, working, being collaborative with the architect, being more collaborative with the owner, and uh, you know, getting closer to fighting off that 30% inefficiency. So I think that's it. I, I went a little fast because I know we were, we were kind of squeezed on time there. Plus, I had the long movie issue. <laughs> so, thanks. <laughs> before we let you go, before we let you go, questions. Um, sure. You are a senior executive. You are a senior executive. Nice job. That sounds about right. <laughs> yeah, we, we have, on all our jobs that we use, the, um, in particular the 3D coordination, we've seen a huge increase in productivity of our subcontractors. They are able to ma manufacture more pipe and put more work in place at a faster rate because it's all done three-dimensionally. And they could take those models and put it into their CAD CAM machines and be able to chunk, uh, crunch out the pipe right from the model and then just bring up racks of pipe all put together. And all they do is just do like an install on the job. Before, they used to bring all the pipe out to the job, do the bends and cuts right there on site, and it would just take forever. So we're able to do massive amounts more. Uh, you know, there's one job that we did where it was a huge warehouse. And we were able to put in place, like, in order to have done it as fast as the client wanted us to do it, we would have had to have had, uh, you know, three shifts of like 200 men. And we were able to do it in one shift with like, you know, a third of that, and uh, and and able to do it just as fast. It's just just from that productivity. So yes, we we do it on every major job that we do. Some of the smaller ones where it makes sense and we have the time. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, and and, uh, and I've actually seen uh, seen where we, you can you can baseline the 4D model just like you baseline a schedule, and then you can show um, next to each other and you show, show when the, when the change occurred and how far the job fell behind, or you can even predict and say, okay, this change we feel is going to put the project back this much. So you know, make decisions on how we want to handle that change or if we still want to do it. So the, 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 it's a very strong visual communication tool that we found very useful, not just in communicating back to the client, but communicating amongst ourselves, too. We've, uh, we've had subcontractors drop their prices tremendously after seeing one of these because so they, they, they can take all the question marks out of their estimate. 
which again makes the, makes the job a little easier for you guys or the clients to, to swallow when we go and build the job for, for a cheaper price. Uh, a, a lot, a lot. Well, there, there are there are two. There are a couple industry standards out for a billing information model lean on a job, uh, in a, on a regular construction job right now. Um, and even though it's still though a very new kind of technology, so there, you're seeing a little variance in a lot of business units of how they're implementing the BIM. But at, at a basic sense, um, it, most clients now are 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 well informed on, on how to use BIM on their jobs and, and, they, and they actually put out the BIM standards to both the contractors and subcontractors how they're going to do it on their job and the architect as well. And uh, you know things like one big thing that has changed is the sharing of the model. Uh, you know, architects were, were using BIM before construction really got into it and there has been a lot of contention with architects like letting that model, uh, let, letting the contractors use it for coordination. Um, that, that, that wasn't happening. Now recently that's happening. So they're building in 3D. They're they're giving it to the arc to the con, you know construct construction team. Construction team's giving it to their subcontractors, and we're just being more efficient. So then the, uh, you remind me of a video I've seen uh, at the TED Talk, and it's entitled "Even This Big Sustainability." Can you talk about that I think a lot of architects are, are uh, that's more of the, in the design role, to be able to show the client early, you know, how, the, how their building's going to fit in the rest of the space, when I'm going to get a chance to see it, or even see it from a particular floor, my corner office, or, you know, whatever.